Hey, how you doing? This is RJ. So today I'm going to talk about something which, well, I think previously I was mistaken about. Because previously I had mentioned a number of times that I look at the entertainment industries around us and certain industries specifically like the comic industry and these quote-unquote progressive woke people taking them over with the intention of using them and possibly driving them into the ground with that use and that they would possibly destroy these industries or these properties when and if they are going to lose control of them. But from the information that I now have and where I am looking from now, I would say that no, from the very beginning, what they intended to do was to destroy these industries and these properties. It's not something that might happen because of this or that within their tenure. It is their specific goal. And it is their goal because they're looking at things which have a traditional idea of hero in it, and they cannot allow that to live. They cannot allow that to stand anymore. So something like the comic industry, which is built specifically upon superheroes, other things like, oh, let's say action hero movies or properties that are built upon things like mythology, for example, The Witcher, or we could even include Lord of the Rings. The intent at the very opening was to destroy these things. And when I say destroy, I mean to change them so spectacularly around that they would not look anything like they originally were intended to be like. To make something completely new just wearing the skin suit of what that industry or property was. Now, that's my thesis, and I'm going to try to go through as much information as I have available to me in order to prove that thesis, at the very least prove it to you by the end of this video. But before I get there, I just want to let everyone know that my graphic novel, The Valiant Heroes, is still up on Indiegogo. There is about 10 days left for the initial campaign, so if you want to help us reach any of those stretch goals that I had put down, that is to say, when a stretch goal is hit, you get more for free with any order that you make from that campaign. It is an 82-page traditional superhero graphic novel that focuses on heroism and the great techniques of storytelling and the great techniques of comic making, which I would take from the early 1980s, and put all of that down on a page. And you're looking at some of the spectacular art from my graphic novel in the background. So if any of that sounds appealing to you at all, or looks appealing to you, you might want to click on that link in the description to go on over and see if my graphic novel is for you. But back to my topic. And before I even get into the evidence that I talked about, I want to say the following. A lot of people make comments in my comment section saying, RJ, I listen to you because you have good information and you make good arguments, but it's so gut-wrenching to listen to you because I know at some level you're telling the truth, you're describing things as they are, and it is a black pill. And some people think of me as being black-pilled when nothing could be further from the truth. I am extremely hopeful, and the same thing happens within my own life. I am so cheerful, I would say not on the outside, but so content on the inside, and so hopeful on the inside, that I focus on the negative. Why? Because I don't want that near me. I want to get rid of that. I want to move it away from me, or move myself away from it, or get rid of it so that it's not there in my life. So I focus on it in order to isolate it, in order to get rid of it, in order to live as hopeful a life as I can. So it may sound a bit of a contradiction, but that's really the way that I am. The reason why I'm so negative is because I am so hopeful. And I am so hopeful, certainly when looking at the culture around us today, when looking at the industries and the properties, because these people, these quote-unquote progressive people, are building something upon a fantasy, which of course will not stand. It will fall. And people like me who are going back to traditional storytelling, traditional ways of making things, we're basing our creations on something which is real has been shown to be real through reason and logic, through the tried and true tests of history, scholarship, etc., etc. When dealing with the things I talk about on this channel, this is why I am so hopeful. And that's partly why I do what I do here. I'm trying to describe for people the way that these quote-unquote progressive people think or how they operate. Why? Because I know from various kinds of experience how they operate, first of all, being someone who was in a higher education system for a long time, having to deal with these people for a long time, having to study 
intensely the ideas behind the ideas of why they think this way. And I give that information to people because, well, know your enemy. And in that vein, I want to talk about something which was covered on one of the recent videos from Comics with Perch. Now, some people say, why do you listen to Perch? Why? Because he actually has some good information every once in a while. I don't agree with almost anything he says when he gives his opinion, when he gives his interpretation of things, but he does give out information. Why? Because he has contacts within the mainstream comic industry. These are good contacts that have been proven time and time again. He's even had people like Sean Gordon Murphy on his channel a number of times, and he's one of the biggest names within comics right now. And since I listen to people from the other side who are definitely way against me and my ideas and the way I do things when I listen to podcasts from Marvel, why in the world wouldn't I listen to Perch for the exact same reason, to get information about this industry? And over the holiday, he made a video which said the following, and it was very telling, and he specifically did it, as he says at the end, for us people, listeners, to say to ourselves, okay, this is how these people think. I may not agree with it, it may not have any basis in reality, but I can understand at the very least where they're coming from. So to quote Perch directly from his video, although I'll have to skip around a little bit because he goes off on sidetracks more than I do, well, possibly more than I do, but he says the following, I will tell you for a fact that if you talk to a number of creators, a number of writers, they will tell you that the problem with comics, one of the biggest problems with it is that the comics are way too right-wing, way too conservative, way too right-leaning. And he goes on to say, and here's why. They view superheroes, superheroes in general, as a kind of right-wing power trip fantasy. The idea of putting on a costume and going out and fighting crime is a right-wing idea. It's borderline a fascist idea. They believe that the entire nature of a superhero comic, going out and fighting crime like a policeman would, by its nature, is a very conservative right-wing ideology. The Punisher is super right-wing. He's actually even further. But characters like Captain America, Superman, Batman, it's not even... And then he breaks off into one of his sidetracks, but he comes back and says... These are all right-wing fantasies. Flash, Green Lantern is a space police book. My God, total fascist, right-wing book. Spider-Man, even though sometimes he has to run from police, he's still friends with the police. This is from many, many conversations. This is how people think. This is how creators often think. Now, Perch goes on to say, yes, he understands that this is a fantasy on their part. He doesn't believe this to be true at all, but he knows that they believe it to be true. And he also admits that it is a fantasy idea that doesn't have any basis in reality. But again, he says they believe it to be true. Now, I want to go through this and analyze it and the reasons behind why these people would believe that to be true and to use that as the basis for my argument of why, when these people get into these positions to take over entertainment systems like the comic industry or certain properties, their intent is to destroy it. So first of all, let's look at the left-wing ideology that such people would ascribe to. In their ideology, everything is broken down to a power dynamic. It's who has the more power to exert over other people. In such a system, there is no idea of right or wrong, certainly no objective idea in reality of right or wrong. There's just might makes right and who has the most power. It all comes down to power. And if you ascribe to such an ideology and you take over an industry, like, say, the comic industry, and you firmly believe that this industry is based upon ideas which are completely opposite of what you believe, so much so that they are what you would consider evil, see right-wing ideas, then you have to ask yourself, why in the world would someone, again, who has their entire way of thinking revolve around power and the control of things through power, why in the world would they take over an industry and use it, while at the same time understanding that it is fundamentally a part of an evil thing? Why would they allow it to continue to exist at all 
if they had control over it. And these people do have complete control over it. Well, the point is, they won't. They're not going to allow it to exist at all. They are, from the very get-go, of the mindset that, yes, we're going to destroy this thing. That sure, there's going to be, let's say, a comic industry that looks something like it used to, but they're just going to be wearing the skin suit of what it was. It will be completely destroyed. And this harkens back to the video I made so long ago about Sana Amanat, the person who was approached by Marvel Comics by Joe Quesada and asked if she could come work for Marvel to A, change completely the fan base of the entire comic line, and B, change entirely the way that comics were made. That is a plan of destruction. If you're going to change something into the exact opposite of what it was, that's destruction of the thing. But again, let's look at Perch's words themselves and assume they are true because he's being told this from other creators, which I'm assuming them to be true. He's not lying. He's being told these things and these people believe it. Well, first of all, is it superheroes that are the problem? Are they the thing that is right wing within the minds of these creators? Well, no, it's not superheroes specifically, it's heroes. It's the idea of heroism itself. And why do I say that? Well, let's go back to the words of Perch himself. First of all, he says things like, Green Lantern is a space police book, and says, my God, that's total fascist. He also says things like, Going out and fighting crime like a policeman would is by its nature a very conservative right-wing ideology. So if we're talking about heroes, which have superpowers, and we're talking about policemen in the same vein, you can discount the idea of superpowers within those two groups of individuals. It is their actions apart from their superpowers that actually have to be concentrated on and what you are speaking about. It's the idea of heroism. It is the idea that a country, an institution, a person can have definitive knowledge of an objective thing such as justice. Again, these people, in their ideology, think that everything comes down to power. That means there is no objective right or wrong. So to say that I am claiming that I know justice well enough because it is an objective thing that can be known, and I know it so well enough that I can do something like base a law system upon it and then have people who are enforcers of that law system, which is what police are, if I can claim that to begin with, that's a fascist right-wing idea. Why? Because under the quote-unquote progressive ideology, there's nothing there but a power dynamic. The whole idea of knowing justice as an objective thing is just a fantasy to them, and they think that other people who claim that they know justice in this way, they are simply saying that in order to gain control and power over others. And so it is with the individuals that are superheroes, or heroes in any way, if they put on a costume, that is to say, a uniform, and go out and fight crime because they have the virtue of justice and courage. Because why? Because as a human being, they can use their human nature to understand the objective standard of what justice is enough so that they can go out and say, what this person is doing is wrong. That is the idea of a hero. That's the idea of virtue playing into what a hero is. But to these quote-unquote progressive people, again, that's a fantasy. That's all smoke and mirrors in order for that person to go out and impose their will through power upon others. So again, what they are attacking when they have this mindset is the idea of hero itself. And in the background is the idea of courage and justice itself, is the idea that such things like justice are objective and that they can be known and that a person or, again, an institution like the police or a country can know exactly what justice is because it is objective in their minds, in the quote-unquote progressive minds. Again, that's all smoke and mirrors. That's all a constructed thing in order to distract people so that they accept the power that is being used upon them by these countries, by these institutions, by these individuals. And at the end of the day, it comes down to the idea that 
If you think that you can know objective reality so well that you can construct a system of rules upon it, then you're a fascist. That's pretty much what it comes down to, because these people think that, no, you can't know objective reality well enough to have a system of rules that is going to determine what people should and should not do. If you are doing that, you are, in their minds, constructing a fantasy simply so that you can exercise your power over others. This is why these people hate police. This is where the idea of defunding the police comes from. Most people today look at that and say, well, that's a new idea. Where in the world did they come up with that idea? It's not a new idea. If you look at socialist writings from even the 40s, I could probably go back to the 1920s and come up with that specific, quite specific phrase over and over again. This is part of their ideology, defund the police. Why? because they're a rule-based system which says we can know objective reality and what justice is well enough so that we can impose these rules on others. They don't believe that's even possible. And if you try to do that, again, it is you're exercising your power in a fascistic way. And I'll give you one example of this mindset and where it comes from, although it's a very disturbing example, so I won't go too far into it. I think if I can, I'll link a video to it. The Lotus Eaters did something of an expose on it probably about a year ago, but it's a very old story. It's the fact that in Germany, I think it started in the 1950s, possibly late 1950s, early 1960s, and it was a program that ran by the German government up until the early 2000s. Now, this was not a program that was secretly being run. This was not a program that somebody as a low-level civil servant was just putting in there under people's noses. This was a mainstay program of the German government. The German government was trying to eliminate fascism within its country because that's what they're all about. They won't even allow you to say publicly certain words or even show certain images. They're so afraid of their own history that this is what they did in this program. They took some of the most vulnerable people in the world, which would be very young orphans, and specifically put them into foster homes where they knew they were going to be defiled and abused. Again, this was specifically done, and it was done as a government program. Now, why was this done? This was all done under the umbrella of combating fascism. Why? Well, the basic mindset goes as follows. They believe the very irrational idea that since fascism is rule-based, all rules and people who live by very specific rules, are living in a fascistic or semi-fascist kind of way. Now, I know that's not a cause for a cause. Yes, it's not rational. But this is the basis of their idea, that all rules lead to fascism. So what they thought was, let's take these children, so we start with the very young, and teach them from the very beginning that there is no boundary that cannot be crossed. That is to say, there is no rule that is actually set in reality. It's all just a social construct. And they do that, of course, by having these children being violated in the most horrible ways from the very time that they're little children all the way throughout their upbringing. Because why? Because that's the most taboo thing in the world. That's a rule which most people look at and say, yeah, no, you cannot cross that line. I don't care what you say. I don't care what your ideology is. I don't care what you're trying to argue with me. You do not cross this line. This is wrong. This is objectively wrong. But the government, in order to, again, combat fascism, was to say, no, you see, there is no such thing as right or wrong. These ideas of rules, they just lead to fascism. Therefore, we have to get rid of the idea that there is any objective rules at all. And we do this, we break it down, certainly in the minds of the very young, that there are no such rules at all by violating what should be the most inviolable of these rules. This, by the way, is why you see what you do around you today with all of these things in North American schools. They're trying to do the exact same thing. They're trying to break down that last rule, that inviolable rule 
That rule, which most people would say you cannot cross that. They want it crossed all the time. They want children to grow up being used to the fact that everyone crosses that line all the time. There is no degeneracy that they will not stoop to to cross that line, because it shows that, in their minds, there is no line that cannot be crossed. They're all just social constructs. None of these things are based upon reality. They're not objective at all, because in doing so, they're proving that rules don't exist in reality, which then destroys, in their minds, any ideas that people might have in order to become fascist people. So they literally think they're doing this in order to combat fascism. Just like the German government specifically stated in that program that that's what they were trying to do. And if such people will stoop to that level of depravity to get rid of an idea that there is any objective standard by which you can live by, they will not, will not allow any idea of heroism to ever take root ever again if they get their way. And they will uproot it wherever they find it. They will destroy it. It is their plan from the very beginning to destroy it. Why? Because again, the idea of heroism is based upon reality, what I'm always talking about. It's the virtues of prudence, justice, fortitude, and temperance based upon right reason. That is to say, reason in accord with reality. That is to say, there is objective standards within reality that set the way that you should think about how to act. Once you get there and understand and act according to reality and plan according to reality, you have the virtue of prudence. When you apply that to your interaction with other people, that's justice. When you stand up against those who are trying to push you down from being just and prudent, that is courage and fortitude. When you take stock of all that you have done, when you have lived through that defense of what you know to be true, and you apply it once again to your life, that's temperance. And all of that, that which is the basis of a hero, because a hero is a paragon of virtue, that cannot be allowed to stand. And again, the point is that in their ideology, everything is boiled down to a power dynamic. If you're looking at this whole thing and you're looking at what they're doing and saying, well, you see, they're just trying to stop people from abusing power. They're all about people not having too much power. Well, that's not it at all. It's about not allowing certain people to have power. They're all about exercising power. They're all about exercising power in a controlling way. They have no qualms with that part at all. In their minds, it's simply who exercises that power. They are the only ones that are allowed to exercise that power. Why? Because they work completely upon emotion. Because if they worked completely upon things which are rule-based, then they're fascists, and they fight against that. That's what they're completely opposed to. And of course, as I said, they look at everything according to their own mindset, according to the fact that everybody, everybody operates according to power dynamics. Therefore, if you're someone who believes that you're not, if you're someone who believes in a rule-based system, who believes in the police, who believes in your country, who believes in patriotism, who believes in heroics, who believes in virtue, you're someone who believes in a rule-based system and you're trying to exercise your power upon this, what they see as fantasy rule-based system, which is simply there to confuse people so that you can use your power in a fascist way, because that's what fascism is. Because again, although it's irrational, they believe that rule-based systems lead to, quite specifically, not may lead to, but do always lead to a fascist use of power. This is why Perch is doing this video, talking about people and conversations that he's had with comic pros over the years, many, many conversations, as he says, where they all believe, these writers, that comics are too right-wing, too conservative, too right-leaning, because it's based upon this idea of a hero, which is based upon this idea that they can know what justice is. 
This is why I did that video about a month ago about those television producers and comic book writers and television writers all getting together talking about how what you see on the movie screen and television screen right now, which is adapted from comics, that is way behind the times. They have not moved forward anywhere near enough to really destroy established characters and reinvent them anew, reimagine them, they said, according to these new quote unquote progressive standards, and quite specifically talking about these new quote unquote progressive sexual standards. And they quite literally said that, yeah, we're behind the times. We're not even close to where we should be with doing all of this. And, oh, by the way, don't feel bad about all these shows being canceled right now because you just wait to see what is coming down the pipeline because you ain't seen nothing yet. Or to go back to that video once again and talk specifically about one of the writers who put in there, well, you see, what you have to do when you're in these writing rooms is control yourself enough so that you can be there and continue to influence things little by little by little until you gain more and more control, until you have a higher and higher position, so that when you get to the top, you can impose all the things that you wanted to do in the beginning on everyone else. On all of the story, on all of the writers, on all of the things that you're going to produce that's going to be coming onto your television screen. This is specifically what one of the writers was talking about, that as a quote-unquote progressive person, you have to do. So, with all of that in mind, with the idea firmly fixed in your thoughts that these people take everything and condense it down to a power dynamic, and that power dynamic is centered around control so that they, and only they have power and control, when you look at all of that, and you look at their control over the entertainment system and specific industries like the comic industry or specific properties like Lord of the Rings, and you ask yourself, what is their end game? What was their end game from the very beginning? How can you see anything else except the destruction of this industry or this property or this thing that people cherish? Again, if everything boils down to control and they see these things being firstly in control of their enemy, of people who are inherently what they would see as evil, and now they have control over these industries or properties, then the only thing that they're going to do, the only thing that they're going to plan to do, is to destroy it. Once again, like that writer from that video which I covered a, a couple of weeks ago, they're going to do it slowly, they're going to have to build up, they're going to have to become more and more in control and take over all the positions from anyone who has any inkling of being in opposition to them, and then the destruction will be complete. And as I said, that destruction is simply the fulfillment of their intent from the very beginning. And this is the reason why I, on this channel, constantly defend the idea of a traditional hero. Because, in some sense, it is the center of their ire. Because it's based, traditionally, upon these ideas of reality and the ability to know reality and understand it and use it to help shape the human experience. And remembering that, certainly for me, is key in understanding and renewing the hopefulness that I have. Because it is reality versus a fantasy. The idea of heroism is that reality. This new constructed culture that they're trying to build, it has always been a fantasy. It has always been falling apart. They've just hit it spectacularly well. They've just lied about it, obscured it, kept it from the view of the normal person distracted everyone with shiny little baubles so that they don't see what's going on. But it has always failed in the past, it is failing right now, and it will fail in the future. The only question is how much destruction we will allow them to accomplish on their way to their sad end. So, if I've given you anything new to think about, hit like, Hit the shield in the lower right-hand corner of your screen to subscribe and leave me a comment. 
Tell me what you think about all this. And don't forget, there's only 10 days left if you want to help us reach any of those stretch goals in my campaign for my graphic novel, The Valiant Heroes, which is a book centered around true heroism. So you might want to click on that link in the description and go on over and see if my graphic novel is for you. All right, I'll leave it there. I'll see you later. Bye.